The Blue Note, for me, the journey of that train, I'd already been on this massive train, this massive journey. And some think in the back of my mind knew that no matter what I did, I would eventually be crucified for being out there as drum bass became more popular. The poster boy of the 90s. I was doing parties in New York at the Hudson with Catherine Zeta Jones and Michael Douglas. Being at Chateau Mama, room 1010 with Val Kilner. And so the club aspect, I knew I had to start something. It was almost as if I was trying to give something back, knowing that eventually it was all going to blow up. Blue Note was coming like, really, it was like um, another spin-off of kind of like Abel, Paradise Club, a testing ground for, for music, for like the next generation of music that was coming through. Because obviously there wasn't a club where we, where we could play that type of sound constantly, that little vibe of the metalheads. It was coming to the end of Paradise Club really, wasn't it, to be fair, you know what I mean? We used to do once a month, we used to go to one o'clock. So that was as far as we went on a Sunday. And then obviously, Metalheads came out on a Sunday and there wasn't really that much clubbing going on. And because it was, of the set of times it was, it was kind of an evening thing. So people could go and eat and then come and check out the music from a different angle than actually being out all night. So people would be coming in there with a different level of listening of music. To be fair, that's what I thought, you know what I mean? They would more want to be listening hard into it. Paradise was more, people used to be raving hard and we was more deeper into it, listening to certain tunes. But you'd get more of an artist producers going down to check out Metalheads. There was a group right there, I think it was the first time he played, and he'd been armed up with everybody who gave him tunes. So to me that was a seminal set because it was just like a lot of tunes got broke in that set. Heads traps, mm. were given to him like a lot of stuff was held up. Obviously chemistry store boys used to roll it out standardly. And Doc Scott, I think everybody used to like, you can't really pick one DJ that did one set that stood out. That was the good thing about Bruno. There was always a set that stood out every week that everyone would be talking about. Or music that that person played in a set that everyone was talking about. Like, shit, you hear that? And you heard that before. Like, I used to play it at 7 o'clock and I used to play my set. Like, I was playing the last set. It didn't matter because even up until now, this is the beauty of Bruno. I play abroad now and people book me and where like last year 2007 I've had a few places where I've gone abroad and they said I remember you playing the first set of Blue Note, that's why I booked you because all the way from back then I remember you playing a good set I'm like shit, Blue Note's still haunting me. Metalheads to me, I suppose that was like Mecca really, you know, it was, it was the ultimate a sort of newborn baby, if you like. Before Blue Note, you had Mars, do you remember Speed, next to the Astoria? And I remember going down there and there was Doc Scott playing Chemistry Storm, rest in peace, obviously, do you know what I mean? And uh, Brooklyn was there. Me and Rupert would come down and we'd be putting our studios together because we literally just had a couple of original sort of S950s and that and we put our kit together just so we could have enough kit to make some tunes and then go down to that Mars night and just hear some tunes play down. It's just like, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. But there was no one there, it was just, you know, just the bar staff and that. And then from there, I suppose things just started to pick up. Metalheads was like, that was the one place you could go every Sunday. And it didn't matter if it was something that was made for the dance floor or if it was a track that was made from the heart, you could just play it there and people would appreciate it because it was art. Not just about, you know, drop, rewind, drop, rewind. It was something, you know, pushing the boundaries, let's go somewhere new with it all. I think the formulation of that Metalheads family, you've got to cast your mind back and think, like, you know, the way that I was brought up. I didn't have those, that father figure. I didn't have that aspect to me. And I always felt that, as far as urban art and music is concerned, you know, the, the, the street becomes the father and the mother becomes the music.